Welcome back to the Pinnacle of Dogs, everyone. Uh, as you can see, we have Bandit here. Um, today is not really nothing too special. It's just I just I was just out, uh, you know, doing something. Uh, I think I was going to the store, but I took Bandit, and right next to the store we go to is a PetSmart. So I just wanted to get him out, socialize him a little bit, and I just wanted to take a video just to show y'all really how we do everything with Bandit. Um, right now, all I'm doing is I'm letting him get his sniffs out, letting him go to potty, letting him do what he needs to do before we get into the whole structured walk. But once we're done, I'd say here or whatever heel command that you have, you say, and then he's right next to me. And then I'll stop every once in a while just to make sure he's still checking in with me, making sure he's keeping up with me. As you can see, he is. And then you're going to notice that out here, he's really good. And then when we get inside, his sits, his stopping is a little bit slower, but I keep working it and he eventually gets a lot better. Now, I believe here's when we see our first... Oh, no, no, not here. After he's done sniffing is when we see a little dog. And for those that don't know, uh, Bandit, he, he still is dog reactive, but not as bad, not nearly as bad. I keep telling y'all, like, when we first got him, he growled, lunging. He wouldn't even stay with me, uh, nose to the ground. The, y y I mean, y'all know the whole thing. But we worked with him a lot. And as you can see, we got him really good. Now, you're also going to see in this video, there are some moments. Or there's really one moment in particular. Um, he sees like a rot mix. And it's like everything we tell him just goes out the window. But I don't freak out. Don't yell at him. Don't do anything. I regain his focus. And I kind of desensitize him to the dog because the dog stays in the store for a while. But I'll explain more of that when we get to that point in the video. Right now, just making sure he's with me before he even go in the store. Because if he's not with me outside, why would he be with me inside? Why would he be focused with me um, outside if he isn't focused with me inside? He's basically the point I'm trying to make. Um, as you can see, we walk into the store. There's not a lot of stuff going on right now. So I'm going to make a stop. Because I don't want to... I don't want to overwhelm him when we first come in with all the smells, all the people and everything. So if it's crowded, I just kind of keep walking. Go to, a, like, turn into an aisle and then I do, I stop. Um, mostly because he, he gets very overwhelmed quickly. Um, as you can see right now, he's kind of slower to the, to the whole stopping, to the sit and everything. Because there's just a lot going on. Sorry about that. There's just a lot going on right now. In his eyes, there's a lot going on. But we still do what we have to do. And... We just keep walking. Um, you're going to literally see me. I don't put a lot of the... I try not to put a lot of, like, the actual structured walk into this video because I feel like you guys aren't trying to see that. Um, you guys kind of get the basics of it. Um, what I'm trying to work with here is, if you notice, he sits. I need him to be right next to me. But he kind of likes to creep up in front of me every once in a while. And we saw a dog right here. As you can see, I'm not yanking on his leash. I'm not... I'm not... I'm not doing anything crazy. Um, I just keep walking. I let him look at the dog. I really didn't like that he kind of stayed there for a minute because I want him to stay with me. But his dog stays here for a while. And once again, I get him desensitized to just a smaller dog. Um, but like I was saying, I don't try and put a lot of the structured walk in here mostly because y'all have seen it before. And that's not the point of this video. Um, really, all I want you to know is all I'm trying to work on here like with the structured walk is... I need him to stop right next to me. He, if you notice, when he does stop, he tries to creep up a little bit and all that. And I'm just trying to cut that out. Um, I don't really, um, personally, I don't really like that. Um, but that's why we're here doing this in public, a little socialization, because he tends to do that when we're in public. One, because he used to not go out a lot. Um, not really because of any like his behavior or anything but like we used, we have younger dogs so i we really, we really needed to socialize them before they needed to hit all their markers so we did that and then he kind of he was just at home so now i'm back out with him a lot more kind of just desensitizing him to really everything so that's why we're here we're just working on all that and as you can see i went past the dog again and i flip sides i stay between bandit and the dog one if the dog were to end up running up on bandit I can block him if the and it prevents Bandit from trying to run up on the dog. If you see, if you're gonna, I mean, you will notice when we see dogs. We're about to see a little one right here, but it's just in the cart. And then also when I leave this aisle, you're gonna see to the right, closest to him, you are gonna see another dog. And he actually does really good. Um, he cries a little bit, uh, but other than that, he doesn't pull or anything. Right here, you're gonna see the dog. Um, uh, right there. And then he's gonna, they're gonna walk by and he's gonna try and look at the dog. But nope, we're just gonna keep walking this way. And 
I'm not making a big deal about these dog meetings. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, like, a lot of people make big deals about dog meetings. They tense up, they, they pull the leash closer to them, and the dog realizes that, so the dog is basically getting charged up. So that's not what I'm doing. I'm literally just going on a walk is what it seems like. Because one, I know that I can, I don't want to say control, but I know I can handle Bandit. Um, I know he's not going to do anything crazy. I'm confident in my handling skills. I'm confident in Bandit. Even though he's still in training, I'm just, you just got to be confident with your, especially with your reactive dog. Uh, here, like, this is what I'm talking about. This is why I stay between Bandit and the other dog. Because if he tries to get to the other dog, I don't got to yank him on the leash. He's on a gentle leader, so if I were to yank him hard, it's going to hurt him. And that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. But what I did is I used my body to block it, and we just kept walking. I didn't say bandit here. I didn't say no bandit. No, we just kept walking. I made no big deal of it. We may we might have sped up a little bit just so just so I don't he doesn't go like too crazy. But I want him to understand that these dogs and meeting them, seeing them from afar, there's nothing nothing's gonna happen. He's a very insecure dog. It just comes off differently. Um, as all dogs do. We have we have three insecure dogs: Angus, Takeo. And him, and it all comes off very differently. Bandit growls, you know, he does that whole thing. Angus, you can just, um, it's very basic insecurity. You can tell he's just unsure about himself, very worrisome. Takeo, he just turns into redirecting, um, some aggressive tendencies and stuff like that. You can see here, I stop for the people. I think here we're looking at another dog that's about to walk by, and this is beautiful. This is what I love. He sees the dog, and you can see that he, like, tenses up, and he wants to, he wants to like, jump and go at it. But he doesn't. And then we turn the other way and just walk the other way. Now, something you can do when you do see a dog is you can redirect its attention to you. So if it's like that and you notice that it's tensing up, you can just, like, be like, come on, and go the other way. The reason why I didn't do that is because sometimes if you do that, they just launch the way they want to go. And I really didn't want to do that. And I trusted that Bandit would have just stayed because he's really good at certain stuff like that. Um, he here, he just wasn't staying with me. Uh, he's really interested in the dog grooming over there because he sees a bunch of dogs. As you can see, he's trying to go over there. There's a dog right there. There's a lot going on for Bandit right now. So, but I try to push him a little bit further and we walk past this dog on the other side of the island. You can see he tries to sniff right there trying to get to him i give him a little leash correction and then we keep walking i'm not once again guys i'm not making a big deal you don't need to make big deals for your reactive dog because that's part i'm not going to say that's part of the reason they're reacting but it's giving them a reason to react is a better way to say it because they can understand your body language and feel your energy and they're like why are you being so tense why are you being so nervous and they're it's going to freak them out. Not freak them out, but it's going to let them know that something's changing. So they're going to be prepared. They're going to be charged up. They're going to be more amped. This is what I was talking about when he sees that rot. Right there. Now, I'm going to replay it because I really want y'all to see. Now, I don't know how I checked and did not see the dog because I literally did not see the dog until just now. And I'm like, oh, there's a dog. Now, the problem with this is when I turned the corner, he was head on with that dog. And it's a bigger dog. Like I said, he's insecure. Especially about bigger dogs. Bandit doesn't know how to feel about them. So his first initial reaction is an aggressive tendency or a behavior that we don't particularly like. But when he did that, I just walked him through it. I made sure, one, to keep him away from the dog, to advocate for the other owners and the other dog. And they were they were amazing. They didn't they didn't really give me a lot of uh, a lot of problems. They they seemed like they kinda understood what was happening, which was kinda grateful because Sometimes a lot of people can get really rude with stuff like that. When I'm out training with Bandit or a client's reactive dog, we can get a lot of problems just because of how they act. But you got like, we need to socialize the dogs, you know, as long as it's in a controlled environment, you can handle the dog. The other dog is going to be safe. We're all going to be safe. We really, there really shouldn't be any problems. Um, and you're going to see now what I'm trying to, I'm going to flip him around and you're going to see the dog at like the checkout counter and i'm just keeping him in a kind of a distance and i'm just letting him look at the dog i'm not trying to let oh no no what i'm doing right now is passing from different aisles to let him see the dog from just glimpses of it as we walk by just to get him desensitized to it i'm not trying to keep his vision away from the dog i'm not trying to not let him see this dog 
or any dog. I want him to see the dog. I want him to be able to look at these dogs and learn how to cope with them in a healthy way. And you're going to see what I mean here in a second. So stop trying to avoid your dog's triggers. Even though when you see them, especially at first, your dog's going to go crazy and you might be embarrassed and it might... It's going to be a lot, but you need to not avoid them because it's going to help them learn how to cope in a healthy way. Now, right here, I think is when I just have him chill here because the dog, yep, there's the dog right there. And I'm just having him understand that, one, we don't need every single dog because that's the other thing. He, I think he, he thinks he needs, he, we got, we're going to meet every dog and we're not. Sometimes we're just going to pass dogs and pass dogs and not do nothing. Um, as you can see here, he kind of gets distracted, but he lays down, he chills out. And this is ultimately what I want. And this is what you want from your reactive dog. But what I was trying to say is if you have a reactive dog, you need to make sure that they understand that they're not going to meet every dog. You are just going to walk by dogs and we're going to have a neutral mind state. Same with peop, uh, human aggression. We're not going to, he just heard the dog crying. So now he's, he's worked up now. So he gets like that. And then I'm trying to have him sit. And then these people come by and they want to pet bandit. And I don't let them pet ban it mostly because right now it this is not the time to pet ban it. You pet him, he's gonna be like, oh, I can be, I can act like this. So I had to tell him they're in train, he's in training, all that stuff. But what I was trying to say is, like, if you have a human reactive dog, you need to get them to understand that people, one, when we're on a walk and I'm right by your side, people are not gonna touch you, people are not gonna bother you, dogs aren't gonna, bother, no one's gonna bother you. It's just me and you. You need to focus on me. We can just have a neutral, nice, calm walk. So really the two important things I was trying to say is one, stop avoiding the triggers. Two, the goal is to not, you have a dog reactive dog. The goal is for not is not for your dog to meet every single dog and for it to be a positive experience. Because there are dogs out there that just come off the wrong way that they that they might not like. The goal is to be around the dogs, any dog, and just be okay understand that that dog's not going to bother you you don't got to bother that dog we can just continue our walk same thing with human reactiveness human aggression the goal is for not every single person to touch and pet and love on that dog because that's not what the dog wants what you need to understand is that the dog just needs to understand that i can be around people and when i'm by my owner's side when ban is by my side I'm not going to be bothered. I, I don't have to do anything because I know my owner's going to advocate for me. He's not going to let people come up to me. He's not going to let dogs come up to me. I don't got to meet every single dog. Most dogs, I'm not going to meet. Most people, I'm not going to meet. But I'm allowed to be right next to them in the same room, in the same proximity, and not freak out because I know they're going to leave me alone. And I really don't remember if we see any other dogs here, but that's really what I'm trying to get Bandit to understand. One, we're not going to meet every single dog. We're allowed to look at them from a distance. We're about to be kind of like five feet apart and not meet, but also not freak out. Now, as you can see here, we are exiting the store, but two, two important things I want to point out. One, I'm still doing the structured walk. When we leave the store, it's not like everything just ends. We're doing this all the way into the car. Now, I do go to a little patch area, like a little grass area, let him pee, let him get his sniffs out, kind of let him, basically a reward for him, let him do everything he needs to do, let him relieve himself, and then we're right back to the structured walks until we get into the car. We do this the whole way, and then when I get home, I went out of the car. As you saw in the beginning, I told him yes to come out of the car. That's car manners. We, It's very structured for Bandit. And it's going to be the same way with Takeo. And we really do the same for all of our dogs just because we want to make sure that they're, they have proper etiquette everywhere. From the car to the cage to our gate to the public to even inside our home. But that's really because we have a lot of dogs. And if we, did, if we didn't do none of that, then it would be so chaotic. But... The second important thing is when we get home, I let him go to the bathroom again in our yard, and then I put him in the cage. Not And when we crate train our dogs, it is a positive experience. They, they love the crate. Bandit used to hate the crate, but now he loves it because it's his place where he can turn off his brain. He doesn't have to worry. He has his toys, and he can just go to sleep in there. But the main reason what I'm saying this for is we put him in the crate because we let him soak up what just happened. We do that with all of our dogs. After we're done with the structured walk, we put them in the crate for about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, and let them soak up what just happened, whether it was meeting a dog, whether they were struggling on the structured walk, or if they 
were perfect. They were perfect. We still put them in the crate just so they can soak up what happened. It gives them time to process everything. And that's what we want Bandit to do. We want him to process that, okay, I went out. I met all these dogs. I might have had a freak out. But one, I didn't meet them. Two, they didn't hurt me. And three, nothing negative happened so it was a positive experience for bandit and we're gonna let him soak that up so hopefully when we take him back out he remembers it and it's better so that's just something i wanted to point out for everyone so yeah no i hope y'all enjoyed this video hope there was good information like share comment you know everything uh please stay tuned for our next video we got a we got a couple more coming out i hope you're gonna really enjoy it um we got star and stella's vlog video being edited right now so yeah no just stay tuned for all of that and for those that don't know star and stella are two new husky rescues so i'm just excited for y'all to see everything that went down with all of that so yeah no stay tuned oh yeah yeah good boo. Hmm.